Good evening and welcome to tonight's episode of Big Fat Arts. Well, you've probably been down to Grave Street and seen the fabulous exhibition down there, The Thin Line. Tonight, it is my great pleasure to present to you two exhibiting artists, I got that right, Angela Bailey and Jonathan Hodgkin. Hello and welcome. Hi. Now, The Thin Line, can we talk a little bit about the brief that you guys um, received with the exhibition? Well, there was a curatorial brief um, that went into the thin line idea about um, sometimes there's a perceived thin line between queer and straight or there's a thin line between how queer you are and how queer you aren't and... Um, and so the brief also talked about the thin line between public and private. Yeah, um, yeah so those, those things were mentioned in the brief. Uh, the brief talked about the use of that very, very public space for possibly what has been a relatively private activity making art by queer artists. So th there was a, s a sense of talking about coming out possibly. Uh, the brief also mentioned things about um, not offending the public by displays of genitalia and um, not making party political statements. That was the, the don'ts, the two big mm. don'ts in the brief. No full frontal so, nudity. Yeah, I mean, something like that. I mean, did you find that restrictive at all, that you, you automatically had these well, restrictions placed on your work? I, when I originally read it, I, I suddenly went, oh, wow, I really want to do that and see what happens. But mm. I didn't. <laughs> no, the rebellious artist. <laughs> yeah, I got over that. I didn't have a problem with those, those particular restrictions. I'm, uh, my, my work isn't party political, capital P political anyway. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm much more interested in the in quotidian daily politics, you know, the politics of personal life. So those sorts of capital P politics didn't bother me and fortunately the pieces I, I had I made didn't have dicks and other rude bits in, so... No, they were nude, but they were missing the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if, if, say, there was a political issue at the time that was prevalent to the queer community, that mm. we'd probably have a good argument there that we wanted the work to address mm. issues like that, I think that would have been OK. And also to the space. I mean, I found it... Um, when I went down there, it wasn't busy, but we did talk earlier about... Um, I mean, getting the message across where it is a walkthrough and it, it is a, um, an artist space. Did, was there any consideration with that when you were putting the works together for that space? I was very aware that it, that it was a moving through space, um, and I'm, I'm, I've been very interested in that in, in that in my work anyway. Mm -hmm. That whole thing of how do you stop and how do you make people stop and look and think a little bit, even if it's only briefly. So I was very aware of that space as a moving through space. And so, yeah, it was one of the things that I thought, OK, well, how do I catch people's eye? Because I think that's the first thing that you really have to do. Mm. I think that's what I tried to do as well, was add a bit of a tease value. You know, first there's a layer and then there's something that you could look at behind that, but you have to get up really close. Oh, yeah, and you do, Angela, <laughs> you do. Because it, it's really fascinating, um, you know, it is one of those spaces where... And I think because it, it, it's such a bland area, I mean, mm. there's not much you can do aesthetically with a, um, a subway anyway. And, like, walking through it, you think, oh, my God, there's always something happening there. Mm. Have, you, have you done any research, like, followed somebody through to hear any comments and any of the, you know, the office workers' the suits on their way? Uh, no, I haven't. I've seen people stop and look and, um, you know, then maybe go back and have another look and, and that sort of thing. But if you're down there in peak hour, it's just like this stream of yeah. people come through. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can almost get run over yourself. Yeah. But um, I think during the rest of the day, people just sort of wander through there. You know? Yeah, and check it out. Now, Jonathan, you, um, you're... The name of your piece there is... I call it the Seesaw series, mm -hmm. and there are four pieces that have individual names. Um, I'm showing off a bit. Seesaw in Billico, Seesaw in Boca, Seesaw in Corpo, and Seesaw in Transit. And wow! <laughs> the the, the t Italian titles, the the, the second bit of the, t the titles, uh, in Billico just refers to the kind of umbilical cord that connects the two dolls. Um, the in Boca is it's, it means in your mouth, and I was looking at that whole thing of. Uh, the implication of the knives in eating and cooking and those sorts of things. In corpo is um, 
their words and so they're mental and I wanted them to then refer back to the body as well mm -hmm. and then the in transit is just the doll the um, fire truck and the, and the barbie car because as we were talking earlier I mean I was there with a friend last night and it was, it was really I mean we, we did we spent the most time there what the <laughs> hell is he talking about which I think you know for me that's always good you yeah. have to stand there and really ponder a yeah. piece was that a directive or was or did you say it a little bit simpler than that I, I like to make people do that I like to make people do that what is what the hell is that go, is going on with these pieces what I really wanted to do was to play with and talk about and, and maybe have a dialogue between almost stereotypical masculinity and femininity. Mm. Both of the, both of the, uh, all of the things in all of the pairs are one's a male, male thing and one's a female thing. So on, uh, for the two dolls, one is a G.I. Joe and one's a Ken doll. Mm -hmm. And then, and they you know, one's very much coded as a boy's doll and one's very much coded as a girl's doll. And so I've just subverted that a little bit by having the boy's doll be the receptive end of the plug and the girl's doll be the, penetrative end of the, the of the plug. Excellent. Because I know, I know, as we were talking about earlier, and anybody out there have to excuse, but I'm very honest with <laughs> with, with things like this. And it did. It took a it took a while, yeah. but that actually we, I got it right. Although I did say that I did think that the pipe that's there was representative of the phallus, but it is actually something else. Yeah. Well, I mean, all of the things, all of the connectors have a male end and a female yeah. end, and I've just bought them from the hardware store as male and female things. Great. Now I thank you, John. I really do because <laughs> it was great. Now also, Angela, you're work with the nice little nose marks that you're getting <laughs> against the windows. Yeah, that was the idea to actually try and, and play with that actual space a bit as well, it being a box sort of thing. Um, I wanted to try and get people to sort of have a bit of a perv in there and um, see what they could see really. And that we have yeah. been. And yeah. what's, uh, I can't remember what you actually have, what is it, how do they do how that? How do they do that? And that was a reference to, you know, a somewhat preoccupation that um, the straight world has about how lesbians do it. Right. You know? Um, and I wasn't going to give anything away with the photos. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but um, it was uh, having a go at that. Uh, I think was the main thing. And you're a photographer. Yeah. You were saying, and yeah. um, you're also working for another gallery. Um, I've just coordinated the Linden yeah. show, and um, I run a gallery in um, the Nicholas Building with right. some friends called the Talk Gallery, which has got a midsummer show on there the moment you were saying yeah. and Jonathan you've sort of come from printmaking to dolls I, yeah quite I, a diverse I, I, I move through everything all, all ranges of, of art my training is as a sculptor and as a printmaker I paint um, and all of my work is pretty much project driven I'm working on quilts at the moment I've taught myself how to do quilting in the last sort of six weeks or so so yeah it's just what does the work need to com convey an idea, to play with an idea? Well, okay, I need need to use dolls, and I need to use bar a Barbie car and a fire truck, and I need to use <laughs> knives. So, didn't you have uh, dolls as a child? Um, yeah, no, I did. I actually, I had dolls, and I <laughs> also played hurricanes in my sister's doll's house too. So, <laughs> all right, a lot of hot air. <laughs> no, 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 you just play hurricanes. You just turn it all upside down. It's fabulous. Great oh. game. <laughs> you should try it sometime. Like it. Could that be the premise of the next piece? <laughs> A step back in time. Absolutely. So the thin line is, will this be a continuing theme with Midsummer, do you think, do, as a sort of a, a political angle or a united political angle with that? Because, I mean, it is a, a political, um, or, yeah, it, well, it is a political theme, really. Mm. I think, too, because it's um, in a public space as such, like with the bus shelters as well and the Spencer Street station, it's really gone into the city. For midsummer, that's quite different to have a lot sort of happening in the city. And yeah, and it's a, a big move to have a public art show mm. for midsummer. I think that's that. I think that's a fabulous thing, and hopefully it will continue. Do you think too? Um, I mean, the, Melbourne is is becoming a, again a very cultural centre, and artists are moving back to the city. Uh, for instance, like the Nicholas Building is becoming. Um, there's a lot of uh, studio mm. space there um, along Burke Street again. You know, in the mm. 30s and Norman Lindsay's and people like that lived there. Can you see that happening? Was that anything? Did you sort of look at that aspect and say, well, hey, this is what's culturally happening with Melbourne? Was that any? Uh, or was it just I think perhaps um, there's a there's quite a few artist-run galleries now in the city, and I think it makes it a lot more accessible for um, groups to access spaces for shows and to um, really be able to show their work more in a public setting as well. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think so. I think people are moving actually back mm. towards the city, probably because they're being shoved out of the inner city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have to go back into the and, city. And hopefully the rents won't go up too badly in yeah. the city. No, no. That, oh, of course they'll, they'll settle right down. We'll all be able to, um, to you know, yeah. afford it. <laughs> um, now, and also the artwork for our walls. Um, now, what's coming up for both of you after the thin line? And you both have works in, new, in Q2. I have a work in UQ2 um, and I also have works currently at Borders Cafe yeah. um, and I'm working on having an exhibition of the quilts. I hope to have a show of the quilts at Gluttony in maybe in May. Great. Angela? Mm, I'm just hoping to get through midsummer. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then have a holiday. Because we actually <laughs> created a title for you, you're also the official photographer, but we've called you the artistic archivist. For midsummer. Pardon the pretension, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've been going to quite a few things. Yeah, quite a few <laughs> things by so. Yeah. So, yeah. You, I mean, with a, with a position like that, I mean, you would have to do everything. You're probably finding yourself in four places at once. Uh, yeah, I'd probably... Yeah, the night of Red Roar, I probably did about three or four things before mm. I even got to the dance party. So um, oh it's been it's been busy. Oh, you weren't that yeah. girly asleep in the corner <laughs> with the camera around her neck. No, I was there no, once. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got you in that time. Oh. Got you right in. Oh. Well, it's a great exhibition. I mean, it's, you know, it's really well put together, um, and I think that space too. And one, one of the things too I talked to Nigel about is the absolute bravery of um, putting or making it the, this these exhibitions so accessible to the general public by like having them in the city mm. and um, yeah it's, it's really really quite good well we'd like to thank you both for coming along to the 70s big fat arts midsummer is still happening when we go to air so is there anything else you've got in midsummer that's apart from Q2? New Q2, that's New Q2. Yeah, that's about it really. That's about it. Mm. But you'll be exhibiting heavily next midsummer? I oh, hope so. Hope so, I'm sure you will. Um, thank you for joining us on Big Fat Arts. We are saying good night to Angela Bailey, who is the artistic <laughs> archivist for Midsummer, title. and Jonathan Hodgkin, who likes playing with dolls, <laughs> and, and also sewing too. Are you doing the quilts yourself? Yes, yeah, yeah. You are? Show me yeah. your thumbs. Uh, not too bad. Yeah. Okay, thank you for <laughs> joining us. Is. We will see wow. you again next week. Don't forget, everything that's left at midsummer, make sure you get along and see it. There's also the mass hang hanging, uh, there's everything. Get along and do it. See you next week.